no, 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 uh, I might make the call. Actually, that that happens and most of the time <laughs> for for Asian players as well. If he is losing a lot, don't mm -hmm. bluff him. Yes, you know, and then he's yeah, as, so as Paul was saying that about <laughs> yes. that gamble in the blood that I'm losing three buy-ins already. Okay, one more buy-in, I call. Yeah, not I think anymore. you would want to bluff a guy who's not so analytical. Right, You're right. Uh, I guess so. It it depends. Sometimes they can work in your favor. Mm -hmm. But on average, you know, you yeah, know, yeah. when a guy can analyze the hand so well, you get caught. That's right. Because like, you know, the, the thing uh, is like, of course, it doesn't make sense. I guess that is a lot of times. That's also kind of, I mean, I guess one true thing about that is that like an analytical player can see that they don't have to be right all the time. Mm -hmm. So they might call just because, oh, well, I don't have to be right 25% mm -hmm. of the time. Yes. Uh, to, for this to be okay, whereas like if someone's more emotional, I, I've seen that kind of a lot. Is emotional players might say, "Oh, he just got it again. I guess I fold or whatever." Mm -hmm. And it's really easy to feel really stupid if you make a bad call, which is kind of an important factor. So that's why a big difference about that online and live. Yeah. Because they don't see my face, I don't look stupid if I make a bluff and a cut. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. And in, in, in live games or a final table of a tournament, and then like. You know, on, the on the TV table, you don't want them to look stupid. Some yeah. of the players probably will think that too, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, for sure. It matters a lot on the TV tables. Like, then the pressure is, like, really high compared to, like, anywhere else. Partially for the backers, too. Like, if someone dumps off their chips and it looks really stupid, it's really tough to... Uh, it's, like, if the backers see that, it's like, oh, why do you do that, blah, blah, blah. Um, that's a lot of psychological pressure on top of the money. Um, on like a final table, so most likely you'll see players, especially ones that you know aren't used to playing these kinds of things, um, play like much more straightforward than usual. And so maybe someone like Fedora, who is pretty pretty out of line compared to everyone else, could actually run over the table like a lot. Right. Um, I mean, things like that matter a lot for sure. Uh, like final table is like one of the one of the situations where people just don't play it efficient at all. Also, partly for ICM reasons. Right. Um, so for people who have a, a wider style, they actually limited their strength a little bit on those tables, according to you. That can be the case. I mean, if, if they have a wilder style and situate... But you have to, have to also factor in ICM because so with certain stack sizes, you really don't want to play wild at all. In fact, you have to play like totally the opposite. As an example, very simple example, if someone's very close to busting, for actually, uh, with three players left, was the most ICM vulnerable. So if one player is very close to busting and you and the other guy have both like equal number of chips, you and the other guy basically just want to bust the other guy, the, right. the guy with a very short stack, because it's just such a punt to gamble with the other with the guy who has equal stack size to you as it is to just like let the other guy eventually bust um, unless he doubles up a few times. So in like a, a case like that, you really don't want to play wild at all in spite of like anything. <laughs>